During a typical volcanic eruption, when sulfur is released into the air, it only has enough explosive energy behind it to make it into the lower layer of the atmosphere, called the troposphere. There it will form acid rain. But the effects of acid rain are localized and temporary, and the sulfuric acid falls out of the atmosphere in a matter of weeks. But if the volcano is massive enough, the sulfur gases will travel 15 miles into the uppermost layer of the atmosphere, called the stratosphere. There, they will make their way around the globe and take on a whole new level of destruction. They can unleash a volcanic winter. It's a really explosive volcano. That sulfur dioxide goes up into the stratosphere and it causes these sulfur particles that reflect the sun's heat away, and that causes cooling. 75,000 years ago on the Indonesian island of Sumatra, a supervolcano named Toba violently erupts. Toba would have been an, such an enormous event, and that was the largest eruption of the last two million years. With a supervolcano, you see the potential really to affect the entire world. And that's rare with natural disasters. Most of them affect a localized area. With the super eruption, it really can affect world weather. Toba sets off a worldwide storm that will block out the sun, throw the global climate into chaos, and bring the human race to the brink of extinction. The sun was just not warming the world. Within a few days to a few weeks, people would have started to feel the effects of the cold. The plants would have started dying. And then the animals and the people that feed off of those plants would have started dying as well. But how could one eruption have had such an apocalyptic impact on the entire planet? A supervolcano, it seems, carries the trigger for worldwide destruction. A regular volcano is really a pipe of magma running up from the mantle. But with a supervolcano, you see this huge reservoir of magma sitting right below the crust that actually dimples the Earth above it. The pressure beneath the Earth grows as the magma chamber fills. And when a supervolcano like Toba erupts, it doesn't just send magma through a single vertical vent like a normal volcano. It explodes in every direction, sending destructive gases into the uppermost layers of the atmosphere. In its wake, Toba leaves behind a unique footprint, a gigantic volcanic crater called a caldera. Toba collapsed and formed this huge hole in the ground that is there, it wasn't there before because all that stuff is now in the atmosphere. With a typical volcano like Mount St. Helens, the effects are felt locally. The initial eruption and the ash it releases are what caused the destruction. But Toba also releases something more deadly. Massive amounts of invisible sulfur gases. These gases reach the uppermost layer of the atmosphere, which enables them to travel around the world, setting the stage for this one volcanic eruption to unleash a global catastrophe. The amount of sulfur dioxide that comes out of the volcano is very important in terms of its impacts. If it's a relatively small amount, it's the kind of thing that the Earth system can deal with and absorb. But if it's a huge amount, then you're talking about major problems. Major problems like instantaneous and drastic temperature changes. These sulfur gases convert into particles. We call them sulfuric acid aerosols. And these cloud of particles was blown around the world by the wind and stayed there for several years, blocking out the sun and making it cold and dark at the Earth's surface. The sulfate particles that are in the stratosphere act as a kind of a sunshade to reflect sunlight away from the Earth and cause cooling. With the Earth's rays being deflected back to space, global temperatures plummet by as much as 25 degrees Fahrenheit the entire planet spirals into perpetual winter. It was this huge climate effect that made it so devastating around the world, not just where the volcano erupted. Toba has unleashed a worldwide catastrophe, a phenomenon scientists call a volcanic winter. A volcanic winter has got such extreme cooling, it goes throughout the entire year and can go on for several years or decades, potentially. 
Manitoba's volcanic winter will be more severe than a nuclear winter produced by 20,000 atomic weapons. The drop in temperature quickly turns lush rainforests into dry wastelands and arid deserts into frozen tundras. A prolonged volcanic winter would have catastrophic effects on any ecosystem and could send the global climatic balance into chaos. Potentially what could have happened following that is that you start cooling major parts of the Earth's surface and especially the oceans, the sea surface temperatures. As sea surface temperatures drop, ice begins to expand. And with the ice growth comes continually lower temperatures and drought. Suddenly, early humans are seeing temperatures plummet by as much as 25 degrees Fahrenheit. 25 degrees Fahrenheit, that means the whole world was below freezing. Once that cooling starts taking place globally, you start to see the ice expand, both on the ocean and on land. And once you have that kind of cooling effect, could start off, kick off a process that's a self-reinforcing cycle that could cause more cooling. Could this storm have impacted the planet so severely that it permanently changed the global climate? Did the world's worst volcanic winter send the planet spiraling into an ice age? The world wasn't ready for an ice age, but it was pushed into one.